Hello, Bookmore Brides community. So happy to have you on today. My name is Nick Story with Bookmore Brides. And today I have a guest star with us, Brian Lawrence of brianlawrence.com. He's been kind enough, we've been talking for a while, to join with us and kind of give you an overview of what Google My Business can do. So as you know, on March 16th, we're having a week-long edu free education um, a challenge where we're going to be talking about the attraction phase, the conversion phase, the serving phase, and the referral phase. And Brian's here specifically to talk about um, the Google My Business side of it, how you can use that to start getting leads in your local market. And he's the expert on it. So um, we're going to have the ability for you to ask questions. I'm going to be monitoring on the side here. And if you have any specific questions, please let me know and I'll stop Brian kind of ask him but he also is knowledgeable about SEO and website design and everything in between so um, Brian can you start off by telling us a little bit about Google my business I know people we did a program on this in our membership kind of I guess back maybe in September but people just don't really understand what it is but specifically how it can help them in their local market so tell us what you think about it and how it can help them. sure so Google of course, is the dominant search engine. Yep. And they also tried a social media platform called Google Plus, which ended up just folding. So now they are really doubling down on making sure that Google My Business is the best local resource for online visibility. So they're changing the parameters on how to rank. So let's start a little bit about from a wedding vendor perspective. So everybody has heard, well, you should be found on the, on the first page of Google for all of the keywords that, are, that revolve around your business. And you want, of course, it's, if you're local, you want, the most important thing is to be in your local area. So no one is gonna rank in your local area for just wedding photography, but you have a very good chance of ranking, say, for Detroit wedding photography. Mm -hmm. And on the first page of Google, there are three ways that you can rank on Google on that first page. Number one, you can pay. You can pay Google AdWords. Right. The more that you pay, the, the, more, the, the higher that you rank. But Google also has other types of parameters on how much you have to pay. So I don't really recommend Google AdWords for a local vendor. It's very expensive and you can get needle, needless clicks from competitors that have been that have vindictive. There's just a lot of things that are going on yeah. with, with, uh, with Google AdWords. So most people understand, well, I want to rank on the first page of Google and there's all of the organic listings where any, any, those are, those are listings where you don't have to pay anything. But the challenge is, is that anybody in the world could rank for the first page of Google for, for a keyword term. If they have their website set up the right way, they spend enough money in SEO to rank for those keywords. And the, the authentic companies like all of the wedding media platforms like Wedding Wire and The Knot and, and, and Bridal Shows and local media, their goal is to rank for the same keyword terms that you do so they could bring traffic to their site and deliver it to their advertisers. And that's one of the main way, ways that they get traffic. Yep. So oh with, with, with Google My Business, you have to be a local business. So your only competitors are your, are your, are your local, local peers. Mm -hmm. And most wedding businesses don't pay a lot of attention to Google My Business. And one of the key ways to rank on Google My Business is to get reviews, is to get consistent reviews. I know from my client base that many businesses try to get reviews on Wedding Wire and the Knot. But essentially, if you think about it, if you have 100 reviews on Wedding Wire, and you have five reviews on Google My Business, if you get 20 more reviews on Wedding Wire, how much of a difference is that going to be? But if you get 20 reviews on Google My Business, that could help you rank better and plus make your listing that, that much more clickable. Right. So, the, so a lot of some people hate the different Wedding Wire or not, so. And, and it's, very, it's, it's very, very simple. The, the whole strategy, I'm going to deliver the whole strategy on how to rank on Google My Business. So the first thing is you may, you, you may already have a profile, but because Google sometimes just knows who you are and, and starts a profile for you. But if you look up, if you're 
new in the business and you look up and, and, and look on Google, but it's also Google Maps, you find, you, if you see if you're listed and if it says, are you the business owner, that is shows that you have not created the profile yourself, but you okay. can take ownership of it by clicking onto that listing. But most people have set it set up the, the listing themselves, but the, but the challenge is that they haven't maintained it. Number one, like I said before, they haven't been proactive about getting reviews. And there's a whole profile for people that have a, don't have a, an updated website, the Google My Business profile done right has enough opportunities for photos and videos and information to convert right from that profile. So it really is beneficial to you to really pay attention to having the right descriptions, ranking for the right categories. Often I see, say, a wedding venue that might just check off that they want to rank for wedding venues, but they don't think about catering. Some, sure. You have to think about how people might search for your business and try to rank for those categories. So you just, it's, it's all menu driven. It's so easy to do. And then there are keywords that you could, that you could plant. There's images and there's also little posts that you can do. And my peers in the SEO industry are telling me that Putting a photograph or a small post on Google My Business once a week is really the minimum that you could really start building traction. And the end result, the whole goal is that typically Google My Business has many, many listings, but they usually list the first three, the top three in a particular area on the first page of Google. So that's where you want to be. So right now, if you're ninth and 10th in your area and you start working that listing like i'm suggesting you right. could attain being on that first page of google which make could make all the difference in the world all the difference for you right because i mean we have a lot of venues and a lot of different places from wedding planners on and being able just to get even that much just to get two percent more in your business a year makes a huge amount in the end you know and also there's a, there's also an opportunity to actually do direct messaging on google my business right now google is has changed all to mobile. I mean, that's really, they now have mobile first ranking. So mm -hmm. one of the key things with Google My Business is that if you don't have a mobile friendly site, you're not gonna rank. So it's really, really important for those of us in the audience that have an outdated website to make sure that you update your website to be mobile friendly or, or, you, or you just are gonna absolutely lose in, the, in that game. And you're gonna lose not only conversion, but a lot of, a lot of free traffic. It's 2020. It's time to have it done right, you know. And if you don't know how to do it, you know, have a professional help you out. Absolutely, and and you know, a lot of I know there's sort of a dichotomy between developing a website that pleases Google or for the best user experience. I always defer to the user experience. I think that it's really, really important to, you know, you, you're dealing with people all different funnels of business. And you can't fool around. And, you know, Google tells you that you have to have a lot of content on your site. Yes, you have. A, you want to have a lot of content on your site. It could help your SEO ranking, but it could also make it overwhelming for people to want to read. So you always want to have a consciousness on your web design to, to have little bites of text that are readable and easy to follow. And then you could, they could always read more, but, exactly. but start off with a little bit, a little bit of text. There's but getting that... Okay. People used to dig deep into our websites. We knew that back in 2008 when we started making stuff. Oh my goodness! Like people used to go deep in your website, but now you need to catch them like right away. So absolutely, and it also people are now even on a desktop. People are you are used to scrolling down. It's a scrolling experience. It used to be that you'd have you'd have to have everything above the fold. It do, your navigation doesn't really mean much anymore. You should have all of the places that you want your client to visit after the homepage, right on that homepage. You have to just create almost like a virtual front lobby to make it very easy for people to either convert right from the homepage, which many people will do, on, especially when they're looking on a mobile device, mm -hmm. or to bring them to that strong landing page that brings them to the finish line. Always sure. having contact information easy to access. Please have your contact information right up top too. You know, a phone number, email, we tell everyone if you can get it in there. Get it in there. Absolutely. And there, I know a lot of, a lot of the audience have probably heard about 
uh, the importance of blogging as a way to get good SEO because every time that you blog, it's a reason for Google to return to your site to see what updates you've made. Gotcha. And that is one of the parameters for good ranking is, is, to, is that Google wants to know that your content is fresh. So doing new blog posts are a good way of doing that. And also another, another less known fact is that it's not only new blog posts, but you could also go to your old blog posts and update them. Yeah, we've been teaching a technique about doing skyscraper content, taking the ones that are like really working and beefing them up. So like we help take some of that clear, we take some of that confusion out of it, clarity in our membership sites and our programs, because people hear blogging and they're like, well, I should write about, you know, cakes and things like that. Well, that might not be the best thing where you could write about a local venue that you serve that and kind of get some of that great, great um, cross promotion going on. So we kind of. No, have absolutely. And, all, and also some, some, some well-known venues, if you're not a venue, some well-known venues, there's a lot of searching for that venue by name. So if yeah. you do blog posts revolving around that venue and your blog post ranks for yeah. that that for the for the name and 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 you have a, a title tag and meta description that says yep. that you're you know a refer if, if you happen to be a referred vendor of that yeah. venue that's a really good SEO strategy. I have my coaching clients, I mean that we go out to at tell them like when you have that really good thing you get the great photos in there to go ahead and like send it to the actual uh, venue because a lot of times they'll pass that stuff back out on your social media in collaboration. Plus you look a little better because you're like propping them up more so you can get in better with them. So a couple of- No, ab ab absolutely. And, so and, and, a, and, a, and a really good, getting back to Google My Business, yep. a really good SEO strategy is, and it really, it, it's, it's like you're repurposing your work is that if you have blog posts on your site, just do a preview on Google My Business to direct them to to your site because because number one it's satisfying that you're that you're adding contact to your Google My Business profile and you're linking to your site so you so you're showing Google again on Google My Business that you're continuing to add new content to your site. Can you talk more about that? So like the one thing I I, I was thinking that that our members are probably going to say is like. Oh no, not another thing, you know, it's a, oh, it's Instagram and there's all these things to do, but one more thing to do, but I like how you just mentioned that you take the blog post you already wrote, take a little snapshot of it and put it over there. So you're using the same content in multiple ways, right? So absolutely one more thing, because none of us have any time, right? So, and you're using, you, you have to understand that, look, you're, you're designing your website for the user experience to, to get a conversion. But you're doing what you're doing on Google My Business for the for the posting is for Google's benefit. It's to show Google that you're being consistent on that profile, so they want to rank you higher. And and by having by doing it with the same blog post that you have on your website, it's a double benefit because you're showing not only Google's not only going to come to your site and and spider it again for ranking, but but Google My Business will see that you're continually doing fresh content to your website. Is and, it a, and, yeah. Is it a long process to set all this up? You know. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's no. It's real. It's very easy. It's very so quick. End of, end of the week, it could be done. A couple of days. Yes. Oh no. Very no. It's very 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 quick. And there's one. Other, there's one other parameter that that the audience should understand also is that another thing that Google defers to as far as as far as ranking them on, on, on Google My Business or Google Maps, I just want to make sure the two of them are sort of interchangeable, sure. is that they look at other directories that like Bing, Yahoo, Foursquare, the, the Yellow Pages, and a number of other directories that may in itself not draw a lot of traffic, but collectively, if you, if you are listed on those directories, it could generate more traffic, but it especially helps Google to, to, to confirm your locality, to confirm that you're in a lot of places on the web, web World Wide Web in a very consistent way. And yeah. the important thing on those directories is that you, you want to be listed exactly the same way as you are in Google My Business. Google My Business is the king, and all of the other directories are the subjects that want to follow the lead of Google My Business. So I, I've, I've done studies. And I actually have a tool on my website, on my homepage, 
that you can click on and get a free report that shows you where you're listed on these other directories. And I've picked up a change in name where, or cha different phone numbers, listing an yeah. address. People have moved, but they forgot to change it on that directory. Sure. That, that creates confusion for Google. They're trying to make sure that they're totally accurate. So if they see a, a, a particular directory that shows a different address, it creates pause for them. So you always want to be consistent in how in being on those directories. Well, some of our emails have been changing in phone numbers, you know, since uh, as we purchased Book More Brides from founders Stephanie and Jeff, and we've been kind of switching things over. Maybe we should take a look at that too to make sure all those different areas on the web have these different, um, you know, have these different uh, the numbers in the right spot, you know? So you always want people to contact you. You don't want to lose a sale for five people not being able to get a hold Absolutely. Right? And you should, and, and, you know, I had an interesting uh, situation happen with a, uh, with a caterer. So a uh -huh. caterer moves into, rents a space that starting on a particular day that was, that used to be rented by another caterer. So as of that day, they own, they own that facility, but not according to, not according to the internet. Okay. There are, the, the, it just doesn't stop. There is, they, there are still plenty of places that showed the old owner as being located there. So mm -hmm. the reason I'm saying that is that if you are a business that is that moved, you should really search for yourself and spend as many hours as you can to check out everywhere you're listed and make changes on on your address. Well, quite a few of our people that we talk to, they're um, they're really good at what they do. They you know they're really good. They got. Uh, what do you call it? leads and everything, but they find themselves moving to another part of the country. One gentleman just moved from like uh, California over to the East Coast, so his information says, "Hey, he's way back here." So he's going to have to kind of maybe use a service like this to kind of reestablish himself from this new base. So no, it. very, it's it's very very important because it creates a lot of confusion, and also a lot of times people that that say that say someone like that particular person makes a move. And they remember and they change the information on their website as far as the physical website that people see. They also have to remember to change the title tags and meta descriptions, which, oh, yeah. uh, which, yeah. which, is, which is what <laughs> tells Google right. where to rank you. And that's one of the biggest things that I've seen. When, you know, I look at hundreds of websites, and there's some really nice websites out there that have been done by very, by very good designers or even self-designed. I mean, there's nothing wrong with designing your own website as long as it doesn't look that way. But a lot of a lot of people that design websites themselves, they forget about the title tags and meta descriptions, which is which is the way that Google indexes you. Easy to do, I guess. Very yeah. easy to do. I mean, it, I mean, it, look, it's very easy to do. But if you do it, if you want to do it on a high level, it takes a professional to do what's called keyword research, because you want to carefully choose the keywords that you that that you have the best chance of ranking for. Even though you may want to rank for, the, for your favorite keyword term, it may be too competitive. So, and also sometimes there's a difference between a browsing term and a buying term. Like if someone, like say someone is, is a wedding photographer yep. and, and, they, and they, they're a specialist as a photojournalist. So if someone happened to be searching for wedding photography and, and, they're, and, and they have a particular style, they may be, they would do better ranking for this type of style that they do, even though there's less searches, that's, that, that, that's more of a pinpoint type of client for them. Interesting. Yep. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of interesting strategies with all different categories of wedding businesses. And you know, my experience in the wedding industry is broad. I used to own wedding centers that provided one-stop shopping. So I really, I lived the life. So I understand how to market to the wedding couple. I understand the business. So it's more of like when you work with me, it's more like working with a marketing partner. There you go. So with Google My Business, so what what more do they need to know about that? It's real, you know, it's it, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, set, the, the, it, up. set it set it up. Well, the, for most people, it's not it's it's already set up. It's 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 now completing the profile and Google. There's a control panel on Google My Business that tells you that gives you all the different fields to fill out it gives you an opportunity to change things around to add images to add videos to add different types of messaging so that it's Hi, Kayla. <laughs> the more the more that you do that wow. uh, the more free even if you change around your description 
that is a way of updating Google My Business. So it's not just posting. It's not just adding images or videos. Sure. And, and also when you add images, there's a place to add text. It's an opportunity to add a key, some sort of keyword that you want to rank for because when you're ranking on Google, you're not just rank, you don't, you're not just concerned with ranking for text results. You can yep. also rank for videos. You could also rank for images. Right. So like anything, you know, we should all start simple and not try to get overwhelmed with that. Exactly. Reason. Exactly. That's why I'm, this is a real good tasks, baseline. But then you can get into the master class, you know, like, like Caitlin Brogan, you know, she's got, she's on with us today. And, uh, you know, like I know, I know a lot about Facebook, but she's got the master class on it. She kind of knows all this great information. So it's nice to be able to get started with stuff and then learn more as you go, instead of just being like, like locked into, I'm not going to do anything. So does anybody else have any questions? You know, love seeing you. Hi, Celia. Hi, Stephanie. Please uh, ask some questions while we go on monitoring on my phone, how we're doing and I'll ask away. Caitlin says, actually, Caitlin says, how, Brian, how, so how often should you be making changes to your Google My Business profile? Uh, once a week is ideal. And even if you do it more okay. frequently, but once, once a week is really ideal. Okay. And again, it could be any type of update. Okay. So if they make any kind of update, and like you said, use content they're already using anyways, just kind of put or push it over to there. What about for our phase two type clients who have a lot going on? They got weddings all over the place. You know, is this a task that you can reliably, um, I would think, put have one of the members of your team do or a VA kind of outsource some of that? It's a very, it's, it's absolutely a very easy thing to outsource right. because, because you're really, you're really repurposing content and you could also, and if your website is, is up to date, you could use content from your website to continually update your Google My Business profile. Okay. So it real it is, it is very easy. The one thing that is not so easy is if you have 50 or 60 directories out there that you could be listed on and you have to go in and try to, first of all, access ownership of that directory listing and make changes on that and also update that consistently because the more it's not just google my business the more that you update your profile on bing the more that you update your profile on yahoo the better that you're going to rank there obviously it's not going to be anywhere near as powerful as google my business sure. but at the same time it's not going to be as competitive so you might be a bigger fish in a smaller sea if you focus on those so there are tools out there like actually i have a strategy that that where we okay. where we update all the directories well every month it does, to to really make it to make a difference which really helps them in those individual directories at the same time helps the google my business authenticity welcome amy how you doing um yeah very good so like anything it sounds like there's a lot you can do with it but the minimum is just to get started check with it do the directories and make sure you're kind of set up. And if you can do it once a week, or if you don't have time, or you're at a level that you're looking to streamline your business, you can outsource it to a wonderful VA, kind of like what we do with a lot of our business. So. Yes, and then and, and also to be consistent about getting reviews. It isn't. It, it's not. How do you get reviews down there, just for people who don't know? Well, for, well, first of all, in the control panel of the Google My Business, they generate a special link that you could email or post on social media or have on your website to review you. So it's very, it's very, very simple, but it's important to know that Google is looking for consistency. They're not looking for you to get 10 reviews one week and no reviews for the next three months. So you're better off getting one or two reviews a week or a few a month and just build it up gradually. Well, this is true everywhere. Like I said, on, um, on March 16th, we're doing a week-long training in one of our areas. It was the attraction phase, the conversion phase, the serving, and the referral phase. And that, in that referral section, we teach about that type of stuff, too, and how to get those referrals and how to spread them out. So you're getting some to Wedding Wire, some to not, or whatever. It, that is so that, – absolutely. So yeah. important. Now, now, don't put all the eggs out. in one basket. And then use it, but systematically do it. And then also how to ask so that – you're not worried about getting bad reviews. We got a little secret with that one. So we'll right, you got to you got to filter it. Hi, Kira. Welcome. So 
Well, Brian, let me see. Does anybody else have any open questions? Thank you, Caitlin, for that good one. Anybody have any questions for Brian from brianlawrence.com? Hmm. Anything else you wanted to add, Brian, that you think they need to know for today? Mm -hmm. just, just that it's, really, it's, it's a really good opportunity. Uh, it, it just gets started with it. It does not take up a lot of time. And if 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 it, if something that you can't do yourself, it's it, it could be done easily by somebody else. I mean, certainly it's something that I do for some clients that just are just overwhelmed with a lot of things. But sure, there's there's no there's no secret sauce here when it comes to Google My Business. Just there are other nuances and strategies that are a little bit more intricate. But if you, it's all a matter of how you're competing. If you look at some of the Google My Business profiles of your competitors and you see When's the last time they updated an image or, right. or added content? Or how complete is their profile? How many reviews do they have compared to you? So you do need to, 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 to use some competitive strategies because it's all a matter of how you're going to measure up against your competitors to rank higher than them. Right. Okay, so I have a couple questions here that came in. So let's start with Sylvia. She says, I have a few lackluster reviews and I hate to direct my clients there to advise. So I'm assuming Sylvia, you don't want them seeing those lackluster reviews. So like I was saying, there are some ways to get reviews from customers that you know are gonna give you good ones and that's part of the referral process you gotta do. But what do you say to her to that? Um, does she kind of push through? What does she do? She says, I have a few lackluster reviews, but hate to direct my clients there to adv advise, please. Yes. So. One of, the, one of the things that you have to realize is that some people are going to read reviews, some people aren't, but if they see a, a, a low review average, like your average review is like a three or a two, that has, you have to do something about it. Yep. So, so as you said, it's, it's, important, it's important to be, to one at a time, get trusted customers that you know you did a great job to review you. But it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just customers. It could be other wedding vendors. It could be guests of the, of, of the clients. Just sure. anybody that could speak nicely about you that is, that is an, a Google user could help very quickly put those bad reviews to the bottom. And simply just asking for it. You know, when you yes. meet people, people want to help each other reciprocity wise too. Um, sounds like you got to push through it. So Sylvia, uh, maybe if you want to DM us later in the conversation, we could talk about a couple other strategies, okay? All right, another question here. Tracy, welcome Tracy, says, is there importance to the quality of your images and do they need to be professional? And Tracy, the images at least need to convey the story about how of your value of your services or whatnot. Now, professional or not, I'll leave it up to Brian. What do you think about having professional versus some of the authentic photos of people in action, you know, having fun or whatnot. I really, again, for Google My Business, I think for your website, you want to have great photos because people are really focused on your on your site. I mean, you're they're at one with you at that moment. But as far as Google My Business, it you don't want pictures that photographs that are going to be a turn off, but they don't have to be top notch. They just have to be that. They just have to convey and be clear. About, uh, but, what, about what that bride or couple's going to get through your services. Not yes, I mean, if, whether, whether it's, it's look, if you're, yeah. if you're in the invitation business, mm -hmm. uh, you, you want, you don't you, or have products, you want those product shots to, to be a, a good reflection of the product because then, because, but, but if it, but if it, if it's more the venue mm -hmm. or, or a wedding planner, you yeah. just want to sh show aspirational photos of couples that are and, and and the guests that are having a really good time right. in a beautiful landscape and showcase the core they could just be you know natural shots it's not something that people are going to spend a lot of time on typically on google my business it's all a matter that they're, they're, they're just most of the time that you will get they'll be heading over to your website and that's really mm -hmm. really where you want to impress them but for google's purpose you're just keeping to, keeping it updated because the, because google helps Helps they rank that way, rank right. better that way. And Tracy, my wife just did a uh, live, I think yesterday or day before, about clarity in your messaging. And that's something we're going to talk about a lot 
a lot over time and we talk about it in the membership and elsewhere. So please keep an eye out for that. It should be just a couple, couple things down if you wanna take a look at that. All right, Brandy, thank you for joining us, Brandy. So how can, it says, how can I remove that exterior 360 image of my house? which is my business address. How do, she doesn't want people probably seeing their house or not. You know, I don't want that either because we have kids and stuff like that. What, what would you give an advice to Brandon? Uh, understandable. You, you, you know, you have the choice of changing the settings in Google My Business to hide the address. They hide the address. They will you can hide the address then. Yes. Yes. Um, will they still show up on the map? Kind of They'll like show up on the map in the area. Look, it's all things being equal. Mm -hmm. It's better to have your address showing you don't have to if you if you make it clear that you that you're by appointment that you don't have that you don't show hours people are not it, you know it's all a matter of, i don't i don't want to honor people's privacy and, and sure. sense of security so i don't want to make a judgment but strictly from a online visibility standpoint the having the address is better but being uncomfortable with something like the virtual tour yeah. and showing the house is definitely a consideration but there is a way to, to, I don't think people are going to really focus on that very much. Sure. But one of the things that help bring a home-based business to sort of level the playing field is if they have a professional work environment inside their house to show like pictures of what it's like sure. to work with, with the client. I mean, naturally, I know a lot of home-based businesses well, we may don't... meet you at a Starbucks or, or, or yeah. on site. I know someone in Jersey near you guys that um, she does a hairstyle out of her garage. She's got all redone. Another guy who's got like a really cool setup in his garage all set up. So I can see how it's a conflict to have his address there. But I think Brandy, yes, you can. Um, sounds like Brian's saying you can mute it if you really want to. But you still get the benefits of Google My Business, right? Even though she muted her address or whatnot. Yes, yeah, absolutely, you absolutely do, but it, but it, it's a little bit more difficult. But if you're, uh, you know, a, a type of business that is that has a, a a large geographic reach, you're you're going to that, you're going to the to the, to you know, as a wedding vendor, most of the time, if, unless you're a physical location or 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 a venue, you're going to the to the place that a business where the wedding is taking place. So that could be a large or servicing those clients be a large geographic area. Right, but photographers or calligraphers might not right. you know, have a studio they want yet. But. Okay, um, I got another question here. So Sylvia asks, regarding text, is alt tagging the way to do that? Or is it better to add text image into the image itself? You could, no, alt, alt text on, no, you don't need to do the caption, just the alt text is fine on each image. Okay, all right, Brandy just says, um, it's just a terrible picture. Garage is open, the house is repainted, but the image is old. Just not best foot forward. Okay, well that's different. I don't know how to fix that one. Um, I could think a lot of people might not want to because of kids and privacy, but this one sounds like they've just got that old picture. I wonder how often those, uh, you know, Google camera cars come by. You know? Right, right. I wonder, can you? Yeah, you probably can't upload photos, can you? But... No, their virtual tour. Uh... I guess if you work out of your home, you could put, um, you could upload updated photos of your house. You know, it sounds like a garage down, painted and everything. You might be able to put that as one of your images if you're expecting people to come to your home so they could at least see that image instead of. I, I, but, but I do think the important thing is what the experience is being inside the house working with, with the vendor sure. and having pictures of that. I would agree. Yes, the story is always better, but sometimes it's nice to know where you're going if you're showing up at somebody's home. You know. So. No, I understand with a garage open or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Great questions, guys. This is what we want every time we do these Facebook lives. Please ask away. That's a good way, and we love the interaction. We love having fun with you, and it like it just makes it more fun to be able to answer your questions. And after it, you can always add more questions into the um, feed uh, for the replays. So. And often we'll do watch parties a little later or at different times. All right, Tracy says, how you doing on time, Brian? You good for more questions? Sure, okay. absolutely, my right. pleasure. Please keep them coming then. So Tracy says, how do we get Google Business to change the exterior image? So you mean the exterior image of your house, Tracy, or something different? I'm not sure. How do we get Google Business to change the exterior image? 
Well, you, you, as far as their satellite, that's not that isn't anything that we have power over. You can certainly change your profile image and different things like that. But other than that, unfortunately, you're at the mercy of Google. She wrote the business. Okay. Um, so it's just a bad image. So you're at the mercy of Google, Brian says. I guess take a picture and add it to your um, to your role, and hopefully they'll come by again soon. You'll get a good. You'll get just a good just, just have a lot of good reviews. People gravitate to the reviews. Yeah. They're not. They're not really looking. They're mostly looking at the type of business that All you right. are and your and your reputation. So that's a good point. Good reviews is what we want, and a comfortable picture, and then having all around. Okay. When when some when someone is looking at say the preview of of the listings on Google My Business, mm -hmm. first the, the most visual thing is this is the amount of stars. You know how many stars and how many reviews. Uh -huh. So if you if you see they see that they're gonna they, if they see that you have more more good reviews than your competitor. And you're geographically desirable. That there's a good chance they're going to click onto you first. Yep. And can I suggest don't wait till you have more. Like just kind of keep building it over time so that you can keep pushing ahead on it. Because it just takes time to build those up. So don't feel yes. discouraged if your person has 30 of them. Let's just get you to 10 of them and keep going from there. Absolutely. It's just it's a journey. It's a journey. Good word. I like that. Great. Any other questions from the group? Any other questions? I think we're good. Well, everybody, I want to thank Brian Lawrence for joining us, brianlawrence.com. You know, obviously he's very knowledgeable about this. He's took his time off to kind of tell us a little bit about this. He's joining us with Book More Brides and kind of um, taking a moment to help you out. So take a look at his website as well. Um, remember, we have this we have an upcoming uh, March 16th week-long training where we're going to walk you through our um, expanded um, wedding business roadmap, or no matter where you're at, whether you're just starting off getting leads, or whether you are in the middle, where you're, like people who have weekends at, booked weekends all the time, are looking to streamline, or whether you're in the 300k club. So we're teaching you how to do the attraction phase, the conversion phase, the serve phase, and the referral to get an automatic machine that kind of keeps coming. So. That's a free training, week-long training coming up in March. We're going to put tons of energy. And in the meantime, lots of these Google Lives so that you can, um, I mean, Facebook Lives so that you can kind of just get to know us a little better and ask us all the questions you want ahead of time. If you have questions, please reach out. Expect to get a DM from one of our team members. We have uh, Chelsea, we have Tracy, we have Shaniqua, and my wife, Kate, and myself, and all of us have different uh, marketing abilities. So ask questions if you want, we're happy to help. And if you have anything specific or you're just feeling stuck, please reach out to us and we would love to get you a little bit of a, a little bit of a win to kind of get going this season. And then, you know, just report back your wins to the group because everybody loves hearing people winning. So thank you guys so much and we hope you have a good evening. Take care. Thank you.